the Northwest, Comrade Supra Maumapiru, and the Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, Comrade Jesse Duarte. Uh, we have invited you here. here. ...of change towards credible results. Instead, they're witnessing a reversal... ...in the Northwest Province. I'm going to hand over to the Secretary General of the ANC to come and talk to yourselves, after which we'll ask the Chairperson of the ANC in the Northwest to brief yourselves. Thank you, uh, Secretary General. Well, let me say <coughs> good morning to every one of you. I'm sure today we have just called this press conference because uh, from time to t time people have been interested to know what are the developments in terms of Northwest, uh, what's going to happen to the Premier, what is happening there. I'm sure you are aware that by now that uh, government processes are taking its own space there. And uh, today we, we are here to present uh, the Premier of Northwest to you uh, so that he can tell you about the developments. Okay. Okay. You are so quiet. <laughs> you are so Why are you quiet? I don't know because they've been they've been having a, a conversation among themselves. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Secretary General. Ndate is Mahashule. Let me also take this opportunity to recognize the presence of our Deputy Secretary General here, Comrade Jesse Duarte, Kilabuheloena, Comrade Pulemabi, the spokesperson of the of the African National Congress. I never thought that one day I'll be sitting between the SG and the DSG at Lutula House, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a press conference. So one is very much uh, honored uh, for this particular day. Ladies and gentlemen, following the victory of the African National Congress in the elections of uh, 2014, the African National Congress Collective, led by the National Executive Committee, in compliance with the resolutions of the ANC, a decision was taken to deploy as Premier of the People's Province of Bukonibu Pirima Northwest, S.O.R. Mahumapil, who is speaking here today. Now, immediately after that deployment was done, by the National Executive Committee. The immediate task was to make sure that we implement the program of the ANC. And this program of the ANC to better the lives of the people was implemented in the context of the National Development Plan. So as a province, we took a decision that the implementation of the National Development Plan will be done in the context of the rebranding, repositioning, and renewal of the People's Province of Bukonibu Perima. We were doing this mindful of the accumulated challenges from pre-1994 period and post-1994, in which the ANC in the province had been in government for 22 years. We also took a decision to premise the implementation of this rebranding, repositioning, and renewal of the province on five concretes. The five concretes, we adopted them after carefully studying how countries in the east of the world had approached issues of development, particularly China under Xiaoping. And these five concretes are as follows. It is the ACT, which is agriculture, culture, and tourism. And the decision we took was that uh, mining will become a strategic economic tributary to use in order to build the necessary capital to strengthen our pillar 
or our concrete of agriculture, culture, and tourism. We also took a decision that the rest of the variables in implementing the first concrete, which is ACT, we will also take them into account. It can be infrastructure, ICT, and many other related uh, variables. So that's the first concrete. The second concrete is VTSD, which is villages, townships, and small dorpies. We simply chose that concrete because when you look at research, it will tell you that there is over embeddedness of poverty, inequality, and unemployment in the villages the townships, and the small dorpies. So the logical response must be that uh, whatever program you develop has to respond to this embeddedness of poverty, inequality, and unemployment in the villages, the townships, and the small uh, dorpies. As I have said, we were quite conscious of the enormity of the task. Because one of the things we had to do was to reconfigure all the departments in the province, in exception of the Department of Health. We were reconfiguring these departments based on the concrete analysis of the situation that we had uh, looked at and had arrived at as a, as a province. Now, notwithstanding the challenges that we are facing uh, as a province, the challenges over accumulation of underdevelopment and so on, we can indicate today here that as a province, we are now at 89% in as far as the provision of clean drinking water is concerned. And we hope that going forward, all of us in the province will work together to complete the remaining percentage because our people are entitled to the right of accessing and enjoying clean drinking water. In as far as the provision of electricity is concerned, universally, we are now standing at 92%. As a province, you can go and look at ESCOM, they will give you those particular uh, figures. Now, I'm saying this because in most cases, cases you ladies and gentlemen, you, you don't look at the glass being half full. When you look at the glass, you look at the glass being half empty. Now, this is the work that the African National Congress government has done in the province. We also embarked on a program to make sure that we eradicate uh, the bucket system. And we are happy to indicate that uh, we have uh, fully 100% eradicated the budget system in the province, in line with the resolution of the African National Congress, which says where there is formal settlement, we should have eradicated uh, the budget system. Of course, going forward, we are still facing the challenge of uh, informal settlements where we must make sure that we cover the issues of uh, sanitation. Our economy. Uh, currently in the province is growing just above 2.3%. Uh, uh, it was our objective that uh, we must grow the economy at at least 5% by 2019 so that we can adequately respond to the challenges of poverty, inequality, and un unemployment. So that becomes a uh, work in, in progress. One of the decisions we took in 2014 was to establish youth entrepreneurship services as I respond to the challenges of unemployment as far as young people are concerned. And I'm happy to announce that uh, uh, YES is now scheduled in terms of the requirements of the PFMA. We got that confirmation from National Treasury in January 2018. And I'm saying these things uh, notwithstanding the challenges that we face. We still face problems of infrastructure, of roads, we still face problems of uh, bad audit outcomes in some of the departments and the municipalities. We still face uh, challenges of the uh, low skills base in the province. We also have uh, challenges of a disjuncture between what the economy requires uh, in the province in as far as the provision of the necessary relevant skills uh, are concerned. 
We also want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that one of the most important resolutions Nazarak took was that the African National Congress must lead society in making sure that at all fronts, we intensify the struggle against greed, crime, and corruption. So that's the resolution of conference. When you look at uh, all the state of the province's addresses that uh, the Premier has made since 2014, we have always emphasized this particular matter. And that ourselves, working with society, led by the African National Congress, working with the private sector, working with all the law enforcement agencies, we must pay attention to this matter of greed, crime, and corruption. You'll also remember that uh, in 2018, in the State of the Province Address, the Premier did make an, an announcement to the effect that uh, taking this matter forward, we are going to be intensifying our relationships with uh, uh, former administrators in government, former politicians in government, and all of us who are currently in the FIFA administration to make sure that we deal with this particular matter so that we are not seen to be paying lip service uh, to it. Now, I have uh, had a discussion with the national leadership, and I've indicated to the national leadership that uh, one of the challenges that arose in the province was around this particular matter. And that as one embarks on early retirement from the position of a premier in the province, it is uh, my hope, and I know that our leadership is going to do that, that all those issues that were raised in the state of the province address, which center around matters of greed, crime, and corruption as part of intensifying at all fronts the struggle against greed, crime, and corruption will be attended to. I'll just give a few examples. One is that in the province there are over 5,000 foundations where contractors have been paid over the last 22 years or so, and those houses are not there. So one of the things we're going to do is to make sure that we look for the culprits, and we attend to the culprits because more often than not, it will be said that the African National Congress is the one that misleads people, it is the one that is corrupt, when actually the organization called African National Congress is not a corrupt organization. What we need to do is that uh, those of us who are deployed within the state, we must attend to this particular matter. So people must be must be get, get in their houses. As I say, it's over 5,000 foundations that are there. The second thing will be the incomplete roads projects, which are there, an extremely shocking, shoddy work that has been done around some of the roads uh, in the province. The third thing will be where are the shares of the government in as far as the ownership of Sun City is concerned? Because we had received numerous inquiries to say we had inherited from the apartheid the government through the manifestation of the Bob government uh, that particular infrastructure and that ownership of shares. So the question was, where are those shares? Where is the transaction? So we tried to look for the deposits, you know, into the exchequer account of government, and we didn't find any cent coming in there. So we hope that these matters will continue uh, to be attended to. We also hope, and I've raised this matter with the leadership, that there is a phenomenon of an account in the province called D account. It's an account that has got the relationship with traditional uh, leaders, and what accrued to them used to be deposited into that particular account. It was established by the Puputaswana uh, government then. There's been a, a ravaging and an abuse of this particular uh, account. What we did as the FIFA administration was to engage the former public protector. The report was completed, and I've asked the leadership to make sure that they follow up on this particular matter of the D account, because it's one of the issues that is very thorny 
uh, in the province. The additional matter also is uh, the continuous appointment of administrators to manage the financial and administrative affairs of traditional leadership in the province. Many of them did not manage those affairs properly, and most of the money disappeared under the management of those uh, administrators, which were appointed by the provincial government. So it's one of the things that we're going to deal with in implementing the resolution of the ANC of uh, intensifying the struggle at all fronts to deal with matters of greed, crime, and corruption. Irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure, which has accrued over the years and also under the current administration, we have asked the leadership to make sure that, that those issues are not swept uh, under, the, under the carpet. Linked to this particular matter is the, the abuse of immovable state assets by former administrators in government. Some of them are former HODs, and one of them, SG and, and DSG, is now in the Veterans uh, League. Uh, this former HOD stay for free in government houses is now over 12 years. They don't pay uh, uh, money commensurate with what is required in the market, and they are also refusing to leave those particular uh, houses. So this is one of the matters we were going to make sure that uh, we attend to, and the leadership will attend to this particular uh, matter. The disappearance of some of the assets that are owned by, by the government. It can be the Bob Recording Studio, which is now in private hands. We're investigating that particular matter. We hope it will continue to be investigated. Pieces of lands, farms. There was also a case which was open between the third and the fourth administration regarding the issue of uh, wild animals that are owned by government. Nothing is moving on that case. We are going to address that particular uh, case. The last example I want to give is uh, the 29 forensic investigations, uh, which uh, 22 are already completed. The fifth administration, over and above the 29, had done five. So I have an assurance from my leadership that uh, this particular matters will be attended to because partly is one of the reasons why we have a bit of uh, quagmire. Uh, in the province. The other matter which I have requested the leadership to attend to as one goes on necessary early political retirement from position of premier is to investigate this phenomenon which uh, resulted in the looting and the torching of houses, destruction of government property in the following areas, Mafikeng, Taung, Kahisano Molopo, Jobetin and Della River, this particular five areas. And uh, we will at the right time indicate to the leadership our information with regard to the people who were behind this, what is called today the people's demand uh, in the province. Because as far as we are concerned, that is nothing else but counter revolution. And counter revolution, when it rests its head, Revolutionaries must rise to the occasion and attend and thwart the counter-revolution. Now, one of the things that we will have to do going forward is to do sufficient political education of our branches as the first and the last line of defense of the revolution for them to be empowered with this particular information so that they can defend the revolution. Because uh, as far as we are concerned it's, uh, in the province, this was nothing else but uh, counter-revolution. Now, there are two reasons why I'm going on early retirement. The first reason is to say all these investigations that are supposed to take place in the province and are taking place, if they take place in my presence, there will be an accusation that I'm using the office also to protect myself, because those investigations have to continue. And I'm also accused along the process. So if I continue to stay in the office 
and I'm also accused. And at the same time, we are dealing with all, this, all these uh, 35 forensic investigations and other additional ones which are going to come. It will be very difficult to avoid the accusation that you are abusing the office in order for you to get at your political opponents or to defend yourself. So uh, I then came to the, to the decision that, that I think it will be better for one to, to go on early retirement in as far as this particular matter is concerned. The second reason is that uh, the organization in the province is going to attend to this counter-revolution. And uh, this particular counter-revolution, through the structures of the organization, we will then have to use uh, the might of the organization to attend to this counter-revolution. And if I continue to stay as the premier, when some of the counter-revolutionaries are embedded in a program disguised as a revolutionary council and so on, I will also be accused of using my position in government for self-defense. So one has arrived at a conscious decision, very conscious decision to say we will have to make sure that one is allowed to go on early retirement on this particular matter so that those two processes can go on unhindered and without perceptions of one using the office to either defend himself or get at other people who may be seen to be differing with one politically. Lastly, I just want to indicate that in the province we are going to be working towards unity. We have already started to unify and stabilize the African National Congress and the Alliance partners to make sure that we renew the organization. We already started with a big match of reconciliation, healing, and renewal to ready ourselves for the elections which are coming in 2019. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the African National Congress for the deployment and for the ANC to agree that one must go on early retirement. And I also just want to say that uh, I do not expect from the organization compensation in the form of a, a new position elsewhere, because the ANC doesn't owe us any positions. When we engage in the revolution, we engage in the revolution as volunteers uh, in the revolution. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, just know that uh, Supra Oba King Ramueletsi Mahumapi is not a political self-preservation activist. It is the revolution that must come first and the people of South Africa. Other than that, Aluta continue, the struggle continues. Kialabo. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of the ANC in the province of the Northwest. Uh, before we open up for questions, uh, I will allow both the SG and the DSG to take a bite, after which uh, I will come back and tell you what we're going to do. Okay, SG. No, I'm sure. Let, let me just put it in simple terms, uh, no parables. Comrade Supra is today resigning as Premier of Northwest. And I think in that process, he's actually assisting the ANC to deal with uh, all challenges which we are supposed to deal with uh, so that it doesn't become a, an obstacle towards solving whatever problems. Uh, so we are very happy and uh, I think we support his, uh, his move uh, as the African National Congress. I think it has been a difficult time and period, but the fact that he has offered uh, voluntarily so to come here and say to the ANC, I'm prepared to resign, I think it's it's a great thing to do as a leader. Thank you very much. DSG. Thank you much, uh, very much. Mine is just to express the expectations we now have, is that the, uh, the government will continue with its work in terms of the Section 101B, uh, conclude that work so that we can have a uh, proper reporting structure 
Secondly is to say that uh, we call on all our allies uh, and the ANC to work together to enable us to actually build unity in that, in that province. Uh, we don't want to have unity as a slogan. We need to develop real, true unity. We also um, hope that as Comrade Supra returns to the province um, as a cadre of our movement, that he will lead in a process that establishes unity as a practice, that there will be no uh, recriminations, no uh, deep developing problems that continue to persist. We are a bit concerned about the, 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 the new fourth entrant in our politics, which is the social media, which has been extremely undemocratic, extremely vicious, has no respect for anyone or any particular position. Um, and that is something we can't stop. But we're calling on people to be responsible. Uh, as they make statements, as they, as, they, as they do what they think they're doing as individuals, none of those people represent the voice of the ANC. And this is what um, I would like to, to say. Thank you to Comrade Supra for having taken this step. Uh, it goes a long way towards resolving um, what has become almost a, a, a daily uh, discussion amongst you as journalists. Um, also feeding off what the, uh, the social media says. We think this puts an end to a particular set of issues. Let's move forward, and that's really uh, the plea we are making. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, DSG. You might have to put your hands down because I have not said if we're going to take questions or not. So I said I will advise on what is going to happen. So. So, so it's very important that you first check if we are giving you that uh, liberty today. So you can now uh, do what I'm saying you must do. Okay. No, that's fine. You can start with your questions. We'll start this way. Uh, you can start and then. So we'll, uh, SG, we're going to take five, but it looks like there will be more. So what I suggest we do is that we just take one round of questions, no follow-ups and then we deal with them. Okay. Thank you very much. It's Konita Hunter from Eyewitness News. Uh, two questions. Um, one at the chairperson of the ANC in the Northwest Province. You have said before that you will be tendering your resignation. Have you written, signed a letter, and submitted it with the Speaker of the Provincial Legislature? Have you resigned, or are you going to resign? We know we've been here before. Um, the second question I have at the um, ANC Secretary General, uh, what pro they, there has been ongoing talks for a long time with the chairperson of the ANC in the Northwest. What was the final straw? Why now, um, after all of these weeks, uh, if not months? Um, and finally, has there been any talk or consideration over the state of the ANC in the Northwest and whether that will be disbanded, that that structure will be disbanded at all? Thank you very much. Okay, Ndebu. Ndebu with the ACBC. I've got two questions, one for the uh, former Premier. Uh, you, Ndati you're stepping down as the Premier of the Northwest. I would assume you're still the chairperson of the Northwest. Listening to you, you seem to be an unhappy man saying that uh, even labeling some people who at some point were at the forefront of calling for your resignation as counter-revolutionaries. Are you going to use your chairmanship to deal with those because you don't, you're not gonna use that while you're still the premier? And looking at the Northwest, it was a government that was near collapse. Uh, now the administration in the Northwest has been put under administration and you've cited some of your success, but would you accept that uh, you failed the people of the Northwest? And then maybe the last question to the Secretary General. Secretary General, the path to unity and renewal has been a rocky one for the ANC since Nasrek, I would say. Aren't you fearful that uh, this process is sort of a, affirming one faction in the ANC or dealing with one faction in the ANC only to affirm? Another fiction. Okay. Uh, Severe Fagata from Independent. 
Uh, Who? Civil, I forget, from the independent. Oh, civil. Yes. Uh, my first question to you, uh, Provincial Chairperson. You are saying the organization in the North must use its might to deal with counter revolutionaries, and you even mentioned the Revolutionary Council, so to speak, uh, which the PC had decided that they must be disciplined and the ANC must be cleansed, for example. Uh, are you trying to say that now that you won't be at the premier, you will be preoccupying yourself with ensuring that you deal with the people who actually campaign for you to be removed? And secondly, you said as part of going to the structures throughout the province, you are going to mobilize people to go and defend the former president, Jacob Zuma, as you were saying he was innocent. So I want to know, now that you won't be premier, you'll be busy mobilizing structures, uh, dealing with organizational issues. Are you still planning on mobilizing for former President Jacob Zuma to be defended? And I also want to ask this question to the National League of the ANC. Given the decision that you took at the at your NEC, that anyone who wants to defend former president, the former president must do it as individuals and must not link it to the organization. How, how, do you, how did you receive if that thing did come to your attention, that the former premier or the premier, or soon to be former premier, was actually planning to mobilize support for the former president. Thanks. Let's go, Samke. Samke Lomazeo, Jagaranda FM, I've got a number of, of from here. From Jagaranda FM. <laughs> No, 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 some girl, oh, please. We wouldn't want to get to him. No. <laughs> no, 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 this is a, it's a hectic briefing, this one. You even forgot where you work. <laughs> no, no, let's have a nice moment to laugh. I'm sure it's, uh, the Premier is finding it hard uh, to utter the words resign. Uh, but uh, former Premier, I've got... This time around, did you consult the ANC PEC on your resignation as you did a few weeks ago when we were in the Northwest? Then secondly, there are currently protests going on in Costa in the Northwest. What do you have to say about those protests? Since we are embarking on early retirement, will you be leaving with all, what are the benefits that you will be leaving with since we are embarking on this early retirement? And then to the SG of the ANC and to you, Supra Muhammad is this seemingly a purge against those who supported Dr. Nkosa Zanadlamini Zuma in the 54th National Conference in December of the ANC? You've spoken about those who supported Cyril Ramaphosa, who's now the president of the country, are purging those who supported NDZ in December. All three of you, in fact, all four of you sitting there on that table, supported J President, former president, <laughs> Mr. Muhammad Pilo says he's going to go to Durban to support former President Jacob Zuma. The SGS Mahashule has not minced his words in KZN in Maritzburg when he said it's just a matter of four years, comrades, before the real ANC comes back. Is this the so-called NDZ camp, engineering its comeback into the helm of the ANC and of Lutuli House? The last question. Okay. Okay, yeah. Just, let's just agree, we try and minimize on preambles, we go straight to questions. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, why don't we finish this side, Matlas, and then from there we come this side. Is it, is it? As it happens. Genevieve Quincy from the Business Day. <laughs> Um, I've been covered by my colleagues. Just one question. Who will be replacing the Premier in the Northwest? Okay. Mashatse, um, Mashatse, News 24. My question is directed at both uh, DSG and uh, the ANC chairperson of uh, the Northwest. You contradicted yourselves. Uh, DSG spoke, spoke about the fact that there should be no recriminations in the Northwest. And uh, Mr. Mahuma Pelu, you spoke about the fact about using the might of the organization to deal with counter revolutionaries. That is a contradiction in itself. Number two to the SG, 
to the SG, uh, if he is staying on as chairperson of the ANC, are you not concerned given the fact that campaigning has started for 2019 elections and those that have been calling for him to go as premier have also said that the PEC, including himself as the chairperson, uh, must go. Um, thank you, Tidi Madia from News24 as well. The first question I've got is for the leadership, um, the DSG and the SG. Sam has said that, you know, is this a purge? But Supra, you've said many, many times that it is a purge. You said it's people around President Cyril Ramaphosa who are out to get people who did not support his bid for ANC presidency. So my question to the leadership of the ANC is what do you make of that, that allegation, first of all? And would there be an attempt to investigate his claims that there's an actual purge happening within the party? Secondly, to you, Mr. Rahuma Pelora, um, you are speaking about all the things that have gone wrong, but the irony of it all is that you were in charge. Surely it's an indictment on your leadership of the province, these claims of, of corruption that you're speaking about. Thank you. Okay, Natasha. Hi, I'm Natasha Perry here from Afro Worldview. Um, that this super, the last time in the Northwest, your supporters kept on chanting no super, no vote. Now that you've taken a conscious decision to uh, step down, are you not afraid that your supporters might just cause a revolt? Bonolo, you are covered. Okay. Covered, Mwago. Okay, no, we've closed for questions. After the answers, we're going to declare the briefing closed. Uh, yes, uh, DSG, you can start. I see that I can't stay here because, um, you know, our country is, uh, hasn't yet learned that we all come in different sizes. <laughs> okay, firstly, I'd, I'd like to deal just with this question of purging and not purging and conspiracy theories and all the very exciting things that give you headlines. Uh, number one, of course, there's been a great deal of debate within the ANC about the political situation in the Northwest province. Serious concerns are raised amongst us as leadership about the um, views that are expressed by the SACP, Kosatu, Sanko, on the, uh, on the one hand. On the other hand, traditional leaders, members of the ANC, and the contrasting views that have come up. And at the center of these views, has primarily been the person of the Premier of the Northwest. Our view is that the Premier has now resigned, and what we are, are dealing with right now is a mechanisms to find how we will unite elected leaders of the ANC in that province. We must all bear in mind that uh, the PEC of the ANC is an elected structure. It went to a conference, it was elected, there were many people who were unhappy about not being elected in that particular PEC. That is the nature of the animal uh, in a democracy. Some people win and some don't win. And um, we believe that our task right now is to bring all those people together, have discussions about how we work collectively for the 2019 national elections of the country. We, we cannot sit in our offices and conspire how we prevent uh, people from resigning from their positions, nor can we conspire about who might be saying what about purging and, and, and so on. What is in reality has happened? A Section 101B has been implemented in this province. There are precedences. You might remember that in Limpopo, something similar happened. At the time, the person who was asked to resign wasn't the chair of the ANC, but he was nevertheless convinced that in the best interest of governance and the ANC, he leaves the government position, and that had, that had happened. We must sometimes remember backwards. It's useful to do that. We are grateful that Comrade Supra has made this decision today that he is, has resigned, that's my understanding. A letter has been handed to the secretary, the speaker of the parliament. We, are also, uh, we also understand that thorough discussion has taken place within the PEC. There's no need for him to go back and get another discussion in the PEC. Yes, two weeks ago the PEC wasn't happy with him making that proposal. Um, after he had made a similar uh, gesture 
towards the national uh, leadership. Today, that is all water under the bridge. Um, and I think that finally, uh, are, are we concerned that this is a purge against um, us? I don't know. We went to a conference in December, a conference that gave us a mandate, a very clear mandate. It did not elect one side and not the other. It elected a joint leadership. And, and my plea to you is that you recognize that, that there was no winner takes all in that conference. There was a very joint leadership that was elected in that conference from the top six down to the extended NEC of the ANC. And if one looks at the statistics, we all reminded that the margin was 3%. We have to work as a collective, whether we, are, whether we came from different uh, perspectives or not, we are now a leadership led by President Cyril Ramaphosa. Please like that. Please start to like it. We like it. We are happy with the leadership that the branches of the ANC has elected and have instructed us with very progressive resolutions to move forward. We're also calling on all these other little groups that are on Facebooks and WhatsApps calling themselves NDZ, CR17, cease and desist. This thing is over. We have to move forward. Find ways of moving back to the community and doing real ANC work. CR17 WhatsApp group, NDZ WhatsApp group, that's not real ANC work. That is simply limping towards something that has no future. So for the next five years, this is the leadership of the ANC, led by President Cyril Ramaphosa. There will be no other leadership. There will be no interim other leadership. It is moving forward. We are very determined. We also read the newspapers and we say, well, let's shrug our shoulders and move on. But let us make this plea. A leadership was elected. We came from different camps, yes, but the branches of the ANC instructed us in a particular way, and that's the way we are going to go. To go. <coughs> On the issue, Matlatsi, that you raise, will there be recriminations? We are saying that the people who raise their objections uh, in many different ways, by and large, are mainly members of the ANC. Many of them are not, uh, incidentally, but most are. We are going to encourage the leadership in the Northwest province to accept that issues have been raised, 101B has been put in place, it's time to move forward. Let us please allow ourselves to move forward. Thank you. Uh, SG, and uh, I'm sure the DSG has... Well, I think the DSG has covered almost uh, everything uh, around those issues of purging. Uh, we don't think there is any purge because we can fight a purge. But he has said it's a purge. Well. It's coming from, from the words of the government itself. Yes. If it's not what he believes in, <laughs> you can't then say to him uh, he shouldn't express his views. I'm talking on behalf we are talking on behalf of the ANC, and we are saying there is no patch. And we are saying if there is a patch, it won't stand the test of time, because we won't allow it. Now, the ANC is a unitary structure. There is one ANC. And that's why we appreciate, and Mahuma Pilu understand that. Remember, it doesn't happen to Mahuma Pilu. It's not the first time. It has happened to many comrades and many leaders. And it depends how you conduct yourself in the ANC. Many were bitter and left the ANC. Here is Mahuma Piri still remaining. That's the cadre in character of one who understands what the African National Congress stands for. Because he understands that he was not there. Even when you put the blame, you can't put the blame on an individual. If you say, Mahuma Pilu has failed. You should say the ANC has failed people of Northwest because Mahuma Pilu is not representing himself there. And in any government, there is continuity. 
comes in, you found people who have done this, you move on, and, and uh, it's a continuity of uh, how agency structures work. As to who will replace uh, uh, Comrade Supra, it's a matter of the National Executive Committee. Remember, premiers are decided by the National Executive Committee, nobody else. And there is a, an elected structure. So Mahuma Pilo is still the chair of the province because he was elected by structures of the ANC in that province. You can't therefore say, uh, uh, because we, nowadays we don't want to listen to other voices. People can make a lot of noise uh, out there. They have the right to do so. We live in a democracy, but the ANC operates in a particular way. It's guided by its constitutions, conference resolutions, and I think that's what we, we will stick to. <clears throat> We have never said uh, to anybody that uh, those who want to support President Zuma during the trial should not do so. There isn't such an ANC position. And we said any member, any individual who feels to do so, they do it in their own right. Still the position of the ANC. We have not prevented anybody, any member, to be an impossible task to do. Uh, um, and uh, lastly, I think the ANC Northwest is still fine. It's just a matter of challenges of the ANC, not only Northwest, throughout the country. There are these challenges, and these challenges are political, and we will deal with them politically. And I'm definitely sure, as a confident movement of the people, we will overcome those challenges. And the masses of our people are still behind the African National Congress. We are saying to them, never despair. We will fix and deal with all the challenges. Sabelo, in Marisbeck, maybe just to conclude, when there were people who were saying, remember there were people who were saying, President Ramaphosa is not our president. I said to them, there are those who say Gosazana is, 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 is our leader. I said, when you deal with issues of leadership, your time will come. So don't rush. And indeed, uh, I've said, if you are not happy, wait for the next time. The next time is the next conference. So you, you twisted it uh, to mean that uh, I was emphasizing the fact that even if you are not happy, the fact that is that Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa has been elected president. Wait until five years if you are not happy. That, that was what I meant. Uh, and in the ANC, we work as a collective and we'll continue working so. And that's why we appreciate, because other people could have walked away, as they have done many times. They could have walked away from the ANC. Mahuma Pilu is here. The ANC is still intact. And it will be intact. We will deal with the challenges, which are not, uh, uh, some of the challenges are not uh, uh, genuine issues. Uh, and we'll deal with them and uh, reunite, renew, and make sure that we rebuild the structures of the ANC across South Africa, and especially in Northwest. OK. Uh, you can come, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have on numerous occasions indicated that uh, as the province we welcome the invocation of section 100 of the constitution because we are a unitary state and we were not caught by surprise. There was a, a discussion uh, with us uh, as the province in as far as that particular matter is concerned. We have been engaging with the inter-ministerial um, uh, task team. So things are on track. We are simply making sure as a collective, national and provincial spheres, that we deliver services uh, as efficiently as possible to the people of the Northwest province. The question about uh, individuals and so on, recrimination, we are an organization that understands that working for unity and renewal is like working on a road that is perpetual under construction. 
So you'll never arrive at a stage where you say, ladies and gentlemen, we have now arrived at a destination called unity. Everything is honky-dory. Because conditions under which we pursue that necessary objective change all the time. So we said in the PC that it's important for us to engage everybody, including those who may be extreme in as far as their actions are concerned, those whose actions may have included banning government property, touching things, and so on. That's counter-revolutionary, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't engage them. So we'll engage them and say to them, come, when you ban a government building, when you destroy a road, when you destroy government infrastructures and as far as provision of water is concerned, when you destroy you know, infrastructure that is related to electricity, that is counter-revolution. It's against what the masses are supposed to gain and to get. They are rights as enshrined in the Constitution, and therefore we'll say to them, comrades, get out of those actions. It's wrong. And of course, those who continue to do so, the law will have to take its course through the law enforcement uh, uh, agencies. In as far as uh, the appearance of President Zuma is concerned on the 8th in June, we are all bound by the NEC decision. So the NEC decision is very clear in as far as that particular matter is concerned. There can be no supra, no votes. None of us is indispensable in the revolution, from the president up to the last member of the African National Congress, none of us. The revolution is bigger than us. The country is bigger than any one of us. The African National Congress is bigger than any one of us. So I can't be an indispensable individual as Supra Mahuma Bill. As I've said, I want to thank and humble myself for the opportunity that was given to me to serve the people by the African National Congress. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this now brings us to the end of this briefing. You can see in his own words, Comrade Subra remains the chair and loyal member of the African National Congress. Thank you very much. You must also report balanced stories, uh, Sam Kelo from Jagaranda. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Are you about to go there? <laughs>